this well-balanced, fruity, sweet and sour sauce, natural flavours from the plums and the tomatoes and everything in there, it's sweet and sour pork. It's another Wok Wednesday. Welcome back to Wok Wednesday. And this video is sponsored by our lovely friends, Neff. It's a traditional sweet and sour pork with no ketchup in it, the old school restaurant way. And we're starting with essentially kind of making our own plum sauce. So I've got these beautiful red plums here. With your plums, de-seed. It's best to cut round the middle part and then just twist that round to then sort of get the rest of the seed out. And the rest of the seed, and just sort of use a little teaspoon to prise out These plums, super red, you can see the inside, absolutely beautiful. Now, depending on how ripe they are, they might be more sweet or sour than from one to another. So, you know, we're gonna blitz this up and kind of make a juice or plum juice out of these plums. I want that to sieve through just so it collects any extra sort of larger bits of skin. And then whilst that is dripping into the bowl, I can blitz up my tomatoes. And then we'll add the tomato juice to that plum juice. Just let that drip in and then you can prepare the rest whilst that's working itself. Next, for sweet, we've got some sugar, which we can use, which and I will use, but also we've got this stuff here. And this is a hawthorn berry, kind of concentrated jammy sweet. If you can't find this, you could use types of jam. Any types of fruity jam will work. This is primarily what I'm gonna create the sweet for my sweet and sour for in the sauce. Now you can see my kind of smoothie of the tomato and plum. Pour that into there and then bring that to heat on a medium heat. Now here's a great time to talk about our sponsors, Neff, who have kindly sponsored this video. I'm cooking this on induction and this will come up to heat incredibly quickly. But the beauty of the induction hob here is that when I need to change it, it will turn up or down really quickly and it kind of just works perfectly for cooking a lovely sauce like this. You can see it's taken about 15 seconds to come to a boil. My hawthorn or my jammy sort of concentrate is gonna go into your plum and tomato mix. I'm gonna go for two first and then have a little taste to see whether I've got that nice balance of sweet and sour. This has still got quite a lot of sour in it, so I'm gonna go for more of this hawthorn concentrate. I'm gonna taste that again for sweet sour. And absolutely, I'm getting sour. So now, I'm gonna add a bit of sugar to this to get that balance of sweet sour right. As I said, we've got measurements in the recipe here for you guys, but every fruit will be more sweet or sour than the other. So you guys taste test as you go. At the moment, all I'm tasting is sweet and sour, which you'd think, oh, that's what you need. But for good Chinese food to be right, it needs to have a balance of sweet, sour, savory, salty. So I'm gonna put a bit more savory into this and saltiness, and that's gonna come from my light soy. I'm gonna put a tablespoon of light soy in I've also got some rice vinegar in here. I'm gonna use this just a tad to accentuate the, the initial hit of sour that you get from the plums themselves. Now the last thing I'm gonna to add to this is a dash of dark soy, and that will just deepen or that color, that red color even more. My natural sweet and sour sauce is done. Next up, I'm gonna prepare the rest of my ingredients for the stir fry and the marinated meat. So we've got plenty of time now. Just to set the rest of the stir fry up. Just gonna go for chunks of everything. 
and just set up my wok clock of ingredients. So if you don't know, or you just started following us, the wok clock is a nice easy way, my round plate, starting at 12 o'clock with my first ingredient that goes into the wok, and then following round with the rest. Probably only need about half a pepper. Again, similar size chunks will do. Rings of pineapple that will follow suit. And this lovely, colourful plate is set, ready to go. Got a couple of lemons here we can use for garnish or a little squeeze over the top at the end. Just because I'm using, you know, fresh ingredients for this, it'll just work nicely with that fruitiness. And so, lastly, onto the pork. I've got pork shoulder steaks or loin will work. Now don't go too small with the chunks, nice sort of chunky chunks. The marinade, really easy. I've got some ginger and garlic finely chopped up. A good tablespoon or so of light soy. A teaspoon of sesame oil, and then give that a good mix through. Just crack an egg into there, and then get that egg mixed round too before you batter this up. We're going for a dry, dusty white corn flour or corn starch batter, and that uses a lot of corn flour. I've got my oil on a really high heat. I'm gonna double fry this because I want it to go super crispy. Check that that oil is hot. I'm using wooden chopsticks here to just to see if it fizzes. If my oil fizzes with anything wooden, then we're at about 180 degrees C. Just shake off any sort of excess flour sort of clumps. And then straight in, nice and carefully. And then just push into that meat to separate those pieces out in the oil so that when they're sizzling away, they all get that oil sort of heating up or sealing the meat and that batter immediately. And this looks super crispy already. I want to get it even crispier, which is what the double fry will do. So the pork on the first fry is at about two to three minutes of deep frying. And on second fry, only really needs about a minute and it'll come out really super crispy. And that's a great time to talk about our sponsors, Neff, again. With this wok hob here, the Neff wok hob is awesome. Perfect for a round bottom wok like this, where it's just going to sort of create that wok hay, that sort of wok air for me to manoeuvre around the wok very quickly to finish off this sweet and sour. Much like any other sweet and sour or any other sort of saucy, crispy dish, this part happens super quick. A bit of oil around the edge, not too much. It's good to use the clean oil for that. And then we're gonna get your onions in first, which is 12 o'clock on my wok clock. Quite a lot of smoke here, so just flick that through to maneuver that wok's air around the wok. And they just get a nice bit of char around the pieces of onion. Peppers in, again, allow those to kind of blister a little in the wok before you move it around too much, and then give it a quick wok toss. I want to get a bit of char on my pineapple if I can, so I'm going to just add a bit of oil around the edge, and then my pineapple is going to go in. And again, almost allow it to continue smoking. Get your extractor fans on, ready. Bring your onions over the top of the pineapple, not moving that pineapple around too much yet until it catches a little and kind of caramelizes around the edges. Each time I'm flicking it around, I'm allowing that pineapple to catch a little bit more. Now, my lovely hawthorn berry natural sweet and sour sauce is gonna come in. My wok is smoking hot all the way around and I'm gonna pour that sauce, probably a good couple of ladlefuls of sauce over the top. That is seriously hot, that wok. Bring that to a vigorous boil before your meat goes in. Meat in. I'm gonna go double-handed here because it's a lot. Flick that through. Woo, hot stuff. And then straight out. Restaurant style, old school way, sweet and sour pork. So the color of this is what stands out. You know, you can really see that plum color that we started with, that natural color, coloring from the 
and it really is different. Natural sweet and sour flavors from all that fruit in there. A different way to make a sweet and sour pork. It's naturally sweet, it's naturally sour. That beautiful crisp from that double fry. Traditional or old school style sweet and sour pork, thanks to Neff, our awesome sponsors.